I'm Ashley Marie, and today I have a really fun cake tutorial for you, and that is, ba-bam, a standing Lego Batman cake. I'm gonna go over the internal structure and all of that. You can use this tutorial for any other Lego character. Don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss anything. Let's get started. The first thing we need to do is to build the internal structure of our cake that's gonna hold everything up all the weight because you can't make a standing cake without a lot of internal structure. So here is the new Batman from 2017 and I printed off this Lego figure and then I printed it really big. I blew this up so that he's eight inches at the widest points and then I just started measuring. You can see all of my measurements all over the place. Now the thing that we need to get this cake to stand up is a really long structure right in the middle that's gonna hold it all in place. This will be our first board. We're gonna put another board right here to hold the weight of this cake, another board right here. Now notice that this is off-centered. If I'd put it right in the center, I couldn't have had the separate legs, and I wanted to make sure that I had those legs separated. It makes a difference. The little details like that really make a cake impressive. So he's off to the center, but not so far off to the center that we're gonna miss his neck. You wanna be aware of things like that. Um, the side view, it is actually centered all the way up. In my Tamatoa cake, because I didn't have anything going up the center, it was just the leg structures, I was able to get away with quarter inch pipe. Not a problem, it's fairly thin. It was strong enough to hold up the cake, but it's not gonna be strong enough uh, to hold up a standing cake like this, because it would start to wobble as it got this tall. This guy is really tall. He's like 26 inches tall or taller with his ears. <laughs> Another thing you can use is PVC pipe. Uh, you want to go at least about an inch thick though in order to get the strength because as this gets thinner it also starts to get wobbly and thin. And I knew I didn't have a lot of space between here and here and a whole inch would have just been really really big and so I went with a threaded rod and this is a uh, 5 8 inch thick. Nice and strong. Can't bend it. Really. <laughs> There's not gonna be any wobble in this. And then to hold everything in place, we're going to use uh, some nuts. So here are the three boards that we're using, the round one for the base of his head, this rectangle one is for his waist, and then this is our entire cake plate. So this is 16 by 16 inches. So I marked the center of each one of these, and then I went over by the correct measurements and drew where I need that hole to be. This is a uh, MDF half an inch thick. Now I'm gonna do this in my garage rather than my kitchen so that I don't get dust and a mess everywhere. So now my pieces are cut and in addition to cutting the circle, I actually sanded down the edges as well because this is gonna be his that bottom of his head hat area and there'll be a little bit of a curve to it. I grabbed these rubber feet that I'm gonna use but the rubber foot is actually shorter than the nut that I'm using. I actually grabbed two packs and I'm gonna double my feet up and put that into my corners. So I have the height that I need and this will be nice and soft and won't scratch any countertops. It also gives me some leverage where I can stick my hands underneath to pick up the board because believe it or not, these cakes are really heavy. Washer, locking washer, and nut. Same thing on the other side. Here we go, nice sturdy base. From his feet up to his waist, is nine inches. We want our nut there. Then making sure that the hole is on the right half of our project. I'm gonna slide this down into place. Now we know that that bottom nut is right where we want it. So I'm gonna hold that into place and just turn the top one. Nine inches, we hit it. We're going for seven and a quarter. Okay. Now the next thing is his arm skeletal structure. I have some quarter inch uh, copper piping. This is like in the refrigerator aisle. And this is nice and flexible. So it's great for bending parts that are gonna go um, into our cake. It's obviously not great for holding a ton of weight though. Um, but for his arms, this just shouldn't be a problem. Then we're gonna wrap the longer end around. I also took that copper wire and I bent it at the shoulder area and then down at the uh, elbow area. And I locked the copper wire together uh, with two more bolts. Of course, I had to take all this stuff off to do it because I forgot to do it first. So make sure when you, when you are planning your cake that you think about things like that. Let's talk about getting this food safe. I had a lot of comments on my Tamatoa cake about how I didn't do anything to cover 
uh, the wires and the board before um, adding all of the edible products onto it. Now I didn't cover uh, I didn't cover the the wire because I had no intention of eating the fondant off the wire. Now if you want to be able to eat things off of metal, obviously you definitely need to uh, to coat it first. One of the ways that you can protect this structure: melt some chocolate and paint the entire thing with chocolate. Let it set. Um, and then you can build your cake right into it. But one of the other ways is to use some clear packing tape that you get at like a UPS store or something like that and just wrap it all in that clear tape. But personally, I find that that stuff is just kind of a pain to deal with and then it's like clumpy and I don't love it. Um, if I'm doing a small project, I tend to go with the chocolate way. If I'm doing a bigger project, like this is a pretty big structure, what I use is non-toxic paint. Paint it with a non-toxic paint, uh, get every nook and cranny, let it dry completely, and then you'll be able to build your cake on to that. I have four eight by eight chocolate cakes, and the first thing that we're gonna do is cut our feet. So according to our measurements, we want our foot to be four and a half inches long, and then our leg area is actually thinner and it's three and a quarter. So I'm measuring four and a half this way, so I have a nice straight edge this way. I'm going to take some ganache, and ganache is great because one, it's delicious, uh, and two, it sets because it's chocolate, and so it will be nice and firm, and it basically glues everything into place. I use it for all of my uh, carved cakes. So I have two different piping tips. One is a regular uh, base, and so it fits nicely over our threaded rod. So now I have a hole that goes all the way through that's gonna fit nicely over this pole. Now because there's also a nut down here, I'm gonna take this slightly bigger tip and just cut down a little bit. So to get it over the pole, I'm gonna make a little slit right here. So I've added my ganache to my base. I'm gonna kind of pull my cake apart a little bit right here and slide it down into place over that nut. And now we're gonna do the same thing to that leg portion. If we just fill this up with nine inches of cake, that starts to get really heavy. So what we wanna do, we're gonna put a cake plate in between uh, these two layers and the next two layers. Add some straws, take some scissors, and cut them flush. I'm going to cut right into my cake plate, slide that over, and press that down into place. We're gonna angle that first bottom section, and we're gonna go up this way. Then we're gonna take our ruler and measure up to this area right here before the curve starts. Then we have the top inch, and actually the same thing in the back as well. Now it was smoothing everything. So now as you can see, we're working on the body. We need to put our cake board here to hold up the weight of the next two layers, and we need to make room for our arms. So we're gonna put our straws in here, and then of course come in here again, and even this off. I have a cake board that I cut a circle out of, but slide this into place. Now I've cut this hole a little bit bigger because we have to go around both of these nuts. And then we also have to get around the arm. So instead of trying to wrap this around, I'm actually gonna make a cut. Then we're gonna take our first piece and wrap it around the front. Now take the other half of this slice and cover it with ganache and press it into place. Now we need to cut at an angle to get the shape of our body. His neck area is a half an inch lower, so we're gonna go down by half an inch. From the base to the top of Batman's ears is actually eight and a half, and we're at just over seven inches. So as I cut this away, I'm actually going to build up his ears. Stop when you hit the top of the head and kinda come down at an angle. And then starting up here, come in and meet that angle. Now it really is just kind of smoothing everything. We're gonna round this and round that and round these, then add a piece of cake for his nose. Now one of the things I'm gonna try with this cake that I've never done before is to have working lights in the cake. These are gonna be his eyeballs and I made sure that I got some LED lights with a remote so that I could turn them off and not waste their battery between the time I make the cake and insert them into the cake and the time that we actually have it in the party. So wish me luck. So I marked off where his eyes go and now I'm gonna cut into my cake. Mm, let's see if the remote still works. Yay! Now we're gonna cut out the hands and the wrists. Now I have some black fondant that I have added some gum text to. You can also use black gum paste because we want this to dry harder and be stronger. And now we're gonna cut it four and a half by two and a half. 
And these are gonna be our two hands. Now, Lego hands are obviously uh, rounded. And then you wanna find something about an inch and a half wide, like this uh, rolling pin. Now we're gonna take some type of clear alcohol and paint one side of our wrist. And we're going to attach it to the curved side of each hand. Now it's time to start adding all of our black to Batman himself. Now, we're gonna start with his legs, and there's lots of sharp corners and nooks and crannies to these legs, you know, the gap inside, uh, the rounded edge, the rounded edge here, I mean, it's just insane. And if you try to do fondant over all of this, yeah, some areas you could stretch the fondant into, uh, but a lot of areas you would end up just ripping the fondant, it's, uh, and if you paneled it, you know, did each portion, the fondant doesn't come together very well. So what does work with paneling and comes together really well? Well, the answer is modeling chocolate. Modeling chocolate is great uh, because when you have a seam, you can just rub it and because it's chocolate based, it will melt and it will seam together really, really nicely. We finished covering the legs. I went ahead and I covered the body and now we're gonna work on the arms. So I'm taking more of that modeling chocolate and I'm rolling it out into two and a half inch tube. I'm gonna take my side view picture. Now, I've actually already done the right arm. I'm gonna flip it over, and I traced out what I want the arm to look like over here. I have a turn right here. So we want this part of the arm to stay nice and around, but this upper area of the arm actually gets flattened and is the shoulder. But once you're happy with this, I'm gonna come over here and hold it where it's gonna go and kind of press against that wire so it makes an indentation. Take the hand that we've made and dried and I'm gonna stick it here in the end of the wire and I'm gonna clamp it really good. Ugh. Take our knife and cut in to our arm that we've made. We're gonna open that up and we're gonna take a brush with some water on it and brush all over. And we're gonna reseal his arm over there. So start smoothing. Now we're gonna start working on his face. The first thing that we're gonna do is roll out some ivory fondant and then put it over his mouth area. I have some uh, edible wafer paper that I've cut into an eyeball shape. I'm actually gonna put over the light that will give it a better effect. Then take a big sheet of modeling chocolate and drape it over the front of his face. Make sure that you wrap it and rub it into place around his ears and his eyes, his eyebrows mouth, nose. We're gonna cut out the eyes now. Now we don't just wanna cut out the circle of where the glowing light is, we want it to be more eye shaped. Now it's time to add all the details. We're gonna use this uh, white gel food coloring and we're going to paint on all of this stuff. After I finish painting on his chest and his abs, I use that same white paint and I paint on his teeth and then I use some of the black modeling chocolate to outline it. Then I'm gonna cut out an oval in some yellow fondant and add some of that black to the top in the bat shape. Create his logo and put that on his chest. Now it's time to add his utility belt. I've cut some yellow fondant squares that we're gonna turn into his pocket and belt buckle. I stuck some toothpicks in the cake that were sticking out and left them sticking out just a little bit to help hold the extreme width of these, uh, of these pockets. We're almost done, and I noticed that I forgot to create the lines uh, right at his uh, crotch and bottom, I guess. <laughs> if this had been fun, there wouldn't be much that I could do about it at this point, but because it's modeling chocolate, I can still do something about it. So what we have left is his cape. Because of his size, the cape would have been massive, and fondant, gum paste, and modeling chocolate all were too heavy. So I went with black wrapping paper. So the first thing that I did was cut the shape. Now, I modeled this after uh, the Lego cape shape. I cut just little uh, scoops in mine, but I still have that slit that's gonna fold together like that and fit around his neck. And there we go, our, our Batman has his cape. Now we just need like a fan. <sighs> With his lit eyes and a fan going, right? right. <laughs> And it's all done, he turned out amazing. I'm so happy with it. Now the fun thing about this tutorial is you don't just have to make Batman out of it. You can actually create any Lego character using it. The internal structure, the body, the legs, the arms, all of those are gonna be the same no matter what cake or what character you're creating. Uh, now we saw the Lego Batman movie last week and fell in love. My little five-year-old boy is running around going, I'm Batman and talking like that constantly. I just 
It just hurts my throat thinking about it. Anyway, today we are celebrating his fifth birthday party with, you guessed it, a Lego Batman themed birthday party. There'll be links down below to the other party posts as they show up on my blog, including all of the other fun foods that I created for it. So don't forget to check that out. In the comment box down below, I would love to hear from you. What other movies are coming out in 2017 that you would like to see a cake from? Now, if you use this tutorial to create your own cake, don't forget to tag me in social media. I would love to see what you create based on my tutorials. Don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss anything. Obviously, we've got a lot of fun stuff planned this year and you're not gonna want to miss it. Hope you enjoyed the tutorial and thanks for watching.